I think everybody will agree that a trailer can be what decides whether you buy a game or not, even though it's not necessarily a direct reflection of the end game. But you see a trailer, you buy the game, then you realize the trailer was way better than the game. Today, we're gonna go over that exactly. Trailers that ended up being better than the game. That's right, they kind of tricked you. And the first one to trick you was The Expendables 2. Now, does anybody remember the game? Not the movie, the game. It was a top-down twin-stick shooter published by Ubisoft themselves to go alongside the movie of the same name. The game, it was complete and utter crap, and not a single person liked it, but the trailer, the trailer was awesome. I mean, what other game trailer has you getting interrogated by Terry Crews? Come on, maybe he was trying to warn us about the actual game itself? I don't know. Guys, do me a favor. Make sure you are following the Chaos Gaming page. Turn on those notifications. Drop a like. Share this around with a fellow gaming friend. And at number nine, The Force Unleashed 2. This is unfortunate. The Force Unleashed games, they're, they're a mixed bag. The first game was kind of crappy with the gameplay, but the story was good. The second game, kind of a crappy story, but way better gameplay, although the short length and the lack of content kind of killed it. So then we have The Force Unleashed 2. It was actually a pretty big disappointment for a lot of people, but like most Star Wars games, it had some good trailers. This one in particular always stood out. Starkiller was a freak of nature, and this trailer really showed that off while foreshadowing the epic rematch between him and Vader. Now, it's too bad the game ended up being such a letdown because I would have loved to seen a Force Unleashed 3. Maybe we'll get a reboot at some point in the near future, but I kind of doubt it. The Force Unleashed games were kind of, they, well, they just were what they were. They're non-canon after the Disney buyout, and I don't think they're eager to bring these stories back. Next up is the Fallout 76 trailer. Now, Bethesda is really, really, really good at trailers. After all, part of the reason why Fallout 76 was such a disappointment was because the early promo material, it got us hyped. The trailer was so well done. The music, the visuals, the atmosphere, and all that mixed with the beloved Fallout universe made for a massive uh, hype train. But, unfortunately, we all know what happened, and we know how big of a mess it was on launch day. I hear the game is getting fixed up pretty good, decent enough right now. I haven't tried it again myself. I mean, I guess, whatever. Anybody have any intel on it, let me know in the comment section. I'm all for a good comeback story in the gaming world, but Fallout 76 was messy. Next up is Dante's Inferno. Now, I feel I've been talking about this game a lot recently. Inferno was a 2010 hack and slash from EA that was really just meant to capitalize on the success of God of War. You played as a knight diving into hell in an attempt to save his beloved. Now, the gameplay wasn't bad, and the game overall had some pretty good visuals, but it was a very obvious ripoff of God of War, so most people wrote it off. Now, it's a shame because the trailer, well, the trailer showed off an awesome concept, and if the game had been a little more original and a little closer in concept and tone to this trailer, it could have been really good. Yes, you knew it was going to be here. Aliens, Colonial Marines, let's get it out of the way. The no-brainer could have been so much more, but... Due to the abundance of behind-the-scenes controversies, we're never going to get something like this. The game that was originally shown off to be this sci-fi action horror game set after the events of the James Cameron movie looked awesome. You played as a Marine, called in to clean up the mess made by the movie characters. It was, I mean, it was good. The atmosphere was creepy. The AI would be smart. The guns would be punchy. And the visuals, they would knock your socks off, unfortunately. Gearbox was part of countless fumbles during development, which are way too much to get into right now in this video, but the end result was a really awesome trailer, some really good demos that advertised a very, 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 very bad game. Call of Duty Ghosts. Now, Ghosts was definitely a controversial game in the COD community, and part of the reason for that was because of how hyped this trailer made us. This was coming off the back of Modern Warfare 2. Well, not just Modern Warfare 2, the success of MW2, Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, all of them. The God community was eager for something fresh and new, and that's exactly why this trailer made us think. A new story, more stealth-based gameplay, okay, awesome new technology, AI fish, and an amazing story that can blow us away, but it's not exactly what we got. Ghost ended up really dividing the community at the time, and I think it's safe to say the end product was not very close to the serious stealth-based game that we saw in this reveal trailer. At number four, Brink. Do you remember Brink at all? I didn't, honestly. It was a multiplayer FPS developed by Splash Damage and published by, yes again, Bethesda, nine years ago, and we were pretty excited about it. It was a cool world, an appealing art style, and a parkour movement type game, all from the developers of Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Sounds cool, right? Well, Brink had a ton of potential, but it ended up launching completely broken with an extremely shallow mechanic base and barely any content. 
Now, it's kind of a mystery what exactly happened to Brink because you could tell the team was super passionate about it. I mean, it's free to play on Steam, so if you want to go give it a go, you can. But then again, I checked the Steam charts, and there's currently only 17 people playing it, so you may have a little bit of a trouble getting into a match. At number three, Battlefront 2. Now, I remember when this trailer dropped and the whole world got hyped. Yes, we were cautious and we didn't want to get screwed over by EA again, but that was a great trailer and it teased us with what could have been. And of course, I'm talking about the original version of Battlefront 2, not the overhauled version, which is actually pretty good now. This initial trailer from BF2 made us think we were going to go back to the good old days, but when the game launched, we were treated to a shallow, repetitive, pay-to-win Star Wars shooter. Now, honestly, I'm kind of glad this game was such a mess because it ended up leading to a lot of changes in the gaming industry that I think we needed. Hopefully, Battlefront 3 can finally give us the game we wanted on day one. At number two, Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. Now, Castlevania has been extremely up and down throughout the years. On one hand, you have some of the best 2D action games of all time. On the other hand, you have shallow God of War clones like this one. Lords of Shadow 2, well, it was released six years ago. It was a hack and slash game. You did get to play as Dracula, which is cool, and the combat was good, and the visuals were nice, but the mechanics as a whole, they were pretty shallow, and it was clear that this game was just kind of going through the motions. Now, it's not a terrible game, but it's definitely nowhere near the Castlevania franchise kind of bar that they set. But with all that being said, Lords of Shadow 2 had by far one of the best trailers in gaming history. I could watch this trailer over and over again without even thinking about the game that it's actually advertising. And at number one, this is crazy to me. I mean, Dead Dead Island, okay? You all knew it was going to be on here. Dead Island was a zombie-themed action RPG from 2011 with a somewhat unique setting and a ton of promise. So after seeing this trailer, everybody in the gaming world was on board. Unfortunately, this ended up being one of the most infamous trailers of all time due to it being such a poor representation of the final product. This trailer showed off a refined, emotional, and serious story about a zombie apocalypse. I'm talking, this trailer will make you just uh, cry. The final product, though, guess what? Cheesy, buggy, unserious zombie game that gave birth to one of the most underwhelming franchises of the seventh console generation. Dead Island still, to this day, has one of the best trailers we've ever seen in gaming history. But I think most everybody will agree with me that it was not even close to the final product that we received. And there you have it. Those are trailers that ended up being way better than the game. And unfortunately, that happens a lot. The trailer doesn't represent the final product. Maybe it'll get better as we go. I don't know. If you guys can think of a trailer that was in this list that we didn't cover, let me know. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you soon.